Hello everyone, I'm Team Roller 15 and today I'm going to show you guys how to, how I set up my Dazzle for both live streaming and recording. So whether you want to live stream or whether you want to record, this video is for you. I'm going to cover both. But first I'm going to do recording because I get this answer quite often so I decided to do a video about it. Now, and I'm going to be using the Dazzle. I'm only going to cover how to use the Dazzle because I don't use any other recording devices. So, again, you'll need your Dazzle. I have the DVC-100. You can use any. I don't really care. Um, and note that it has a white slot, a red slot, and the video, and the S-Video. I don't use the S-Video, so I'm not going to be covering it. So I'm just only going to be covering the left, right, and audio, and the video. Now, to record from the Dazzle, you will need three Y splitters and an RCA cable. Now, the Y splitters. Again, each, okay, each Y splitter needs to have one male end and two female ends. This is important. One male end, that's pointy, and two female ends where there's a cavity and a hole. So, um, yeah, that's very important. So don't get one that has one female end and two male ends. That's not going to work. I mean, you could still work, but you'd have to use some, you'd have to do more with that one. So this is, so for what I'm using, make sure you get one male end and two female ends for each Y splitter. And you'll know, and you've probably already noticed by now that one of them's a bit different from the others, which are the same. It doesn't matter which one you use, as long as they're all the same, as long as they're all Y splitters. You can get these at Radio Shack or Fry's, or if you don't have a store near you where you can get these, you could just get them online. You'll need three of them, again. Now, what you're going to do here is plug one of them in the Dazzle, plug one into the white slot, plug one into the red slot, and plug one into the uh, yellow slot. So, okay. So it should look like that. Now get your RCA cable. It needs to be composite. Um, I have three of them, but I'm going to use this loose one I have because I have one over here, right here, that I'm not going to unplug because I'm plugging it from this TV, from the back of it. It's a pain in the butt to do. So we're just going to go ahead and use this loose one I have as an example. Now, again, remember, it's white, red, and yellow in that order. So... Take the white one from one of the from one of the RCA cable ends. Take the white one and plug it in one of these for the white white for the white Y splitter. Plug this into one of these, and then do the same for the red. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Okay, and do this for the yellow. Okay, so. You can see that one's going into the white, one's going into the red, and one's going to, into the yellow. And then you plug the other RCA, the the other end of the RCA, these three, into the back of your TV, which again I'm not going to do because that's a pain in the butt to do. This is just an example anyway, you get the idea. And you take your console AV cable, let me get... Okay, and this is the one I have for my PS2. And then do the same. So plug that in here. Plug that in here. And plug this in here. So you can see that three are going here, three are going here. And again, it's white, red, white, red, and yellow. Now what this does is that it allows the Dazzle to record from the console while still displaying um, um, the console's input on the TV. So you can record and play at the same time. And then you just take the USB port of your Dazzle, 
the USB cable, I mean, and then you just plug it into your computer, and that's it. Then you just go into the recording program and plug and and just select the device you wish to record with, which is which in this case is your Dazzle. And it's just really that easy. So again, this is for the white, this is for the red, and this is for the yellow in that order. So yeah, that's basically how to do it if you're just recording. And again, I don't use this video, so I'm not going to cover it. Um, so that's how I do it for just recording. Now, if you want to stream, it's a bit different. See, I use OBS, and for whatever reason, Dazzle just doesn't want to um, put in its audio in OBS. It just, Dazzle Audio just doesn't work with OBS. Um, I don't really know why. I think there's an explanation for it, but I'm not quite sure how, what it is. But the point is that it doesn't work. So, to do that, you would need to bypass the Dazzle altogether and put your game audio into another audio source. And for that, you will need an external sound card. So, and I got so this is the one I use. It's a Sabrent's card. It's actually not bad. I like it. It costs less than eleven, like under eleven dollars at Fry's. I got this one at Fry's. So it has all these buttons, but I don't really bother with them. I just oh, and you'll also want one. Any sound card you use is fine, but what you want to do is get one that has. Um, both the microphone and headphone slot. So, in case you ever need to plug in your headphone into the sound card, you don't have to take everything else out from the microphone jack. So, it's not one jack. You can just use two. So, get one with two jacks. One for the microphone and one for the headphone. And this one also comes with an extension cable. So, you just plug it in here and then your laptop isn't as anchored to the TV. So, I find that really cool. And I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. So you'll need an external sound card like this one. And you'll also need an audio Y splitter. Again, one male end and two female ends. This one has a red end and a white end, but there are some that don't have colors. It just doesn't matter. As long as it's, as long as it's an audio Y splitter with one male end and two female ends, and this should be 3.5 millimeters for this end right here. As long as it's this, you should be fine. I'll link where I'll link the one I I'll link what it looks like in the description, but and I'll link what how to where um what this um the I'll link where to get this one too. So but anyway that's just just to just get these two. One sound card and one audio Y splitter, one male end and two female ends. Now what you're going to do here is Take out the white and take out the red. Now, if you're just recording, you don't need to do this. You still can, but you don't need to. This is just if you're live streaming with OBS because OBS won't pick up the Dazzle audio. So just take the white and the red and put it in here into the Y splitter. Put the white with the white. God, it's hard to do this with one hand. Okay. I can still do it though. So put the white with the white and put the red with the red. Oh goodness. Okay, cool. So it should look like this. White with white, red with red. And then you take this part and then you put it into the microphone slot of your sound card, which is this red jack right here. So And then, okay, sorry. Okay, I got the camera on it now. So, that's what it should look like. Just plug it in this part, and you should be good. And then, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the extension. Okay, so, and now you just, so that's what it should look like. So you can see that the audio is not going to the Dazzle, it is going straight to this device, which will function as a separate device. And now OBS can pick it up. Now leave the yellow, leave the yellow in here. This, the, the Dazzle is still going to be used, but it's only going to be used for video only. 
So leave that in there, but reroute these cables into this device. So it should look like this, and then this part will just be plugged into the computer. Or you could just plug in the sound card like that, but I don't want to. So it should look like this. And then you just plug it into your computer, which is over there. But I'm not going to do that because you get the idea. And yeah, that's how you would bypass the input from from the Dazzle, the audio input from the Dazzle, and then put it into a separate device so OBS can now pick it up. So now that I've shown you what the set, now that I've shown you what the setup should look like for both recording and for both streaming, this being the streaming setup, the other setup being the recording setup. Now I will show you how to set all this up in OBS. So we're going to go ahead and move to the computer. Hello again everyone. As I said earlier, I'm moving the tutorial over to my computer so that you guys can see how I operate OBS. Now there are five areas here. Scenes, Sources, Mixer, Scene Transitions, and Controls. I find scenes useful for different recording setups. So you could have one recording setup for your Dazzle device or a Hoppage HD PVR. And you could have another scene for your emulator, such as Visual Boy Advance. And you can even switch between the scenes, which I find really cool and useful. Sources just determine exactly what type of capture you want to do. So if you want to capture from your audio or from a video capture device such as a Dazzle, you can do that. Mixer just lets you control the volumes of all the various sources. I don't really use scene transitions because I don't use more than one scene at a time when I'm recording and streaming. Controls. Now, there are three buttons you need to worry about here. I don't bother with studio mode because it just changes the um, look at the preview. Um, Exit just lets you exit the application, of course, so you only need to concern yourself with start streaming, start recording, and settings. And the settings can, can also be accessed over here, but this one's faster because it's one less button press. Okay, so you can stream, record, or do both. And I do both because I like to have a backup in case the stream for some reason isn't available on YouTube. So I can just rec upload what I recorded and I'm good. Now let's go into the settings. Now these are the settings that I like to use. So these settings may not work for you or you may want to use different settings. That's fine. You don't have to use the same settings that I'm using. But personally, I like to use these settings. So, for the record, I'm going to show them anyway in case you guys want to use them too. I don't bother with the general advanced or hotkeys tabs. So, I'm only going to so I only bother with stream, output, audio, and video. Now, I'm going to show you how to link up OBS to your YouTube account. So, for stream type here, you select streaming services because I'm not using a custom streaming server. And for the service, I choose YouTube. You can choose any one you want, but I choose YouTube, so I'm going to go with YouTube. Leave all, leave this blank. I don't really care about that. For server, I, sh I choose primary YouTube and just server. And for the stream key, you have to get that from your YouTube account. So log in, go over here to this icon, select Creator Studio. Go to live streaming over here on the left. And then you scroll down. This is what it'll look like when you're not streaming. So you go ahead and scroll down here to the encoder setup area. And you have server URL and stream name slash key. I'm only going to worry about this second one here, not this one. So you would press reveal, then copy the entire thing, and then paste it over here, which you can also reveal here. Now, you should keep your stream key secret because other people can take your stream key and use it to stream on your channel, which you wouldn't want. So for privacy's sake, I'm not going to show my stream key. And it's good for you not to show yours either. So you would, again, you would copy all this after revealing it and then paste it here by right-clicking and selecting paste. 
and YouTube has this interesting function that let that automatically hides your stream key after 10 seconds once you reveal it. So that's really useful. So then you go over here to output. You can change how, now this just determines how your video file is going to be. Is it going to be MP4? What quality will have it? It's, that's just how it is. Now I stick with simple. You can choose advanced because you'll have more options, but I, I like simple because I don't care for any of that. I leave the video bitrate at 1500. This depends on how good your internet is. Um, this is the one that works for me. I could probably go higher, but I find this one just fine. Just figure out what works for you. So, for the encoder, there's only one option, so you can leave that alone. I leave this alone right here, enable audio, advanced encoder settings, just leave that alone. For audio bitrate, I just leave it at 160. Again, you could go higher or lower, it doesn't matter. Again, these are these may not be the settings for you. Now you want to set your recording path, so you would go to browse and then make a folder somewhere on your computer and then you select that folder and then that's where all your streams will be. Um, well, all your recordings, I mean, not your streams. I'd leave this alone. For recording quality, I just choose save my stream. You can choose whichever one you want, it doesn't matter. For recording format, I like choosing MP4. For custom mixer settings, and enable replay buffer, I just leave those alone. Now for audio, I leave it at 48 kilohertz for the sample rate, and for channels, I just leave it at stereo. For these desktop audio devices, I only use these when I'm recording from an emulator. So if I want to record from an emulator, I would just choose my internal sound card for one of these. Now, if I want to record from my console, these are the ones I bother with. Mic device 1, mic device 2, and mic device 3. Or auxiliary device, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I have, so I would set, like, per, typically, I set my my mic here, my USB sound card here that records the game audio, and my backup mic here, because my um, first mic sometimes has problems during the stream, so I end up having to switch it out for my other mic midstream, which you can actually do, which I find really cool. I just leave the canvas and scaled resolutions at these. You can change them if you want. This is, this is again, these are just my settings. For downscale filter, I just leave it at Langsos, sharpen scaling 32 samples. And I leave this at common FPS values and I just leave it at 30. So these are the settings that work for me. I could probably do better, but I'm fine with these settings. They work, I like them, they're consistent. So when you're done with all that, press apply and then okay. And now I'm going to show you how to add sources. First, we want to add our video source, you know, our Dazzle. So you, you can either press this, which means add, and then select the type of capture you want to do, or you could right-click, add, and then select the type of capture you want to do. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I like this because it's just one, again, it's one less button press. So add, and then do video capture device. You can name your source. You don't have to, but I like to, so I'm going to do it as Dazzle DVC 100. And you can see that it's recording for my PS2 that I have running in the background. You don't need to worry about any of these, especially this last one, because we're not recording audio from our Dazzle. I, I, I like to mute this just in case, because, um, again, I still don't know why OBS isn't picking up the Dazzle audio, so in case it for some reason spontaneously starts working, well, at least I don't have to worry about it because it's muted. And now we have this. So we have our source, but it's too small because this is our, this is exactly, this entire box represents how the users will see the stream. This is too small, so we want to make it bigger. Now you can resize it, or you can make it full screen. And you may find that this, when you first add it, it has a fixed ratio, meaning that you can't move it around freely, like see how it's moving proportionally, and how I can't change the shape as freely. To fix that, I would do it to full screen. This is what it will look like for full screen. By right clicking inside the box so that this box shows up, pressing transform and then pressing fit to screen. And then you can move it normally. Oh, oops, not what I meant to do. Okay, yeah, and then you can move it normally. See? 
but we don't but I don't want to leave it like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and again click here so that the red box shows up go to transform and then fit to screen because I like having it um, fitting the entire screen now if you don't want it to fit the entire screen you could just move it over a little and then put something else on the side like I used to have a chat window that I would put here but now I just overlay the chat here so I could just leave this at full screen but I want a full screen for now, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, now that's done. We want to add our audio source. We'll add the audio source from the game audio first. So go ahead and go to add and then audio input capture. I'm going to put in game audio. Make source visible. And then I would choose my USB sound card, which is right here actually and then press OK. And now it is recording from my PS2. It can take, it, it's recording the console audio. So that is one way you can get the audio to work in OBS. There are other ways, but I find this the most reliable one. Okay, so now we want to add our microphone. So again, go to Audio Input Capture. I'm going to type in my mic. And then again, make source visible. And then now I select my mic. And then I press OK. I don't really bother with the use device timestamps box. And now it is recording my voice right here and recording the game audio right here at the same time. And you can manipulate the volume here or mute it all together. I'm not going to do that. So I'll just leave it like this. And I have it all the way down here because if I leave it all, all the way up there, it's going to be really, really loud. Okay, so now that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how you would um, set up your um, recording for your Dazzle. And now we are going to do a test read. So have your encoder open and ready. Go into, again, go into Creator Studio and then live streaming and stream now and then this again this will look like before you start streaming so have this ready so that you can know so that you know exactly when you're streaming because this will change once you start streaming now I'm going to make sure that this is private because this is a test stream I'm going to change the title here okay so now everything's ready so make sure everything's ready all the all the the um the title the description um when you're going to be doing the stream but i'm not going to mess with that right now because typically i like to do a stream two hours in advance that gives people time to catch up and you know if they're falling behind and they want to hurry over here i find two hours a good um, reminder period of time for category of course you want to choose gaming and then I just did this I just did this as a you could just choose any game tile doesn't matter I was just testing something earlier um, and for privacy if you want to do public you do public if you want to do private you do private it's not really that hard to figure out so once we have all this ready you don't need to mess with anything else oh and of course here's your chat Go into OBS and start your encoder. Now, if you want to res now if you want to stream and record at the same time, you would press. I, I typically like to press start streaming and then start recording one after the other really quickly. But if you want to stream, you can just press start streaming. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and do both. So one, two. Now you can see that it's recording both. So it's live and it's recording. Okay. So go over here and then it'll say starting stream health, receiving your content. Your audience will see it in a moment. Get ready. That's what it'll look like once you, right before you start. And then when you start, it'll look like this. Live stream health. You are live. The internet can totally see you now. The stop user recorder. And then there's see the last time. And of course, there's the number of people watching. So now this is what it looks like. And this is probably lagging because I have something else. I have the stream. I have the screen recorder on, so that's 
probably why. So, now that's done, you are going to go ahead and stop it. So, again, press stop streaming and stop recording, run right after the other. Just waiting for that to stop. Okay, the recording stopped and the stream stopped. So open that back up and it should switch to... Okay, there we go. So now it should say offline and stream complete, uploading. And it should show you how long the stream took and how many people watched. So that, that's really how it should look when you're done streaming. So now that you're done, it's going to record a copy of your, I mean, it's going to upload a copy of your stream to YouTube so that people who miss the stream can watch it. You can make it private, public, unlisted, it doesn't matter. So let's go over to Video Manager. It takes at most a minute for the video to show up. So you're going to, so you're going to have to be patient. This isn't the stream. This is this was from uh, a different test, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, now we just wait. So while we're waiting, I mean that's pretty much all you need to do if you want to stream. That's it's really that simple. Once it shows up, you can just go in and edit all the info, like the description and all that stuff. It's really just like editing a normal YouTube video. Let's see if it's going to work. Now, sometimes you have to refresh it a few times. Other times it may show up sooner than you think, but we're just going to have to keep refreshing for now. Still taking a while, just give it a moment. Alright, there it is. Yeah, see, so now it's a video and it's still processing. It'll, it'll take time to process, so you won't be able to see all of the stream when you click on this. But you can see that it's there now. So after it's done processing, which takes no more than 30 minutes, I think. I haven't really timed it. So you'll go in and edit normally. So description, tags, availability, all that stuff. Just like a normal YouTube video. But I'm not going to bother with that because you get the idea. And that's really all you need to know about streaming. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful because I know that it was frustrating trying to find a way to record the gaming audio since OBS didn't want to work with my Dazzle. Before I go, I forgot one very important thing. Now, you don't now for game audio and your microphone, you you could also go into settings, go to audio, and then select um those two devices here too under any slot it doesn't matter you could do it that way too but I don't I like this because it seems more organized anyway again thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time goodbye